Hey, how's it going? Today, I want to introduce you to p5.js, which is a JavaScript library for creative coders. Now, it's designed to be really accessible for educators, people learning how to code, as well as artists and designers and that sort of thing. So I think it would fit in really well with Webflow if you're just wanting to learn how to get the code and want to build some really fancy front ends. I really like it because it's highly performant. It's very good at rendering graphics. It will use your GPU instead of your CPU. So it may be performing better than things like Webflow IX2 or GSAP. Anyways, uh, I had a lot of fun getting to know it, and so I want to introduce you to it. Today, I'll show you some of the basic functions, and then I'll show you how to drop it into Webflow. So I think the first thing to look at is over in examples, like all the stuff that you can build with it, you know, really the sky's the limit. It's got smoke particles. It's got, if we go back, uh, particle systems, just like this. So you can, you know, introduce gravity and all that. Uh, you can even do 3D stuff. It's got input, so it's like tracking my mouse position here. And it, it'll interface with the microphone on your computer. It'll interface with uh, stuff on mobile, like acceleration. So just a ton of options for what you can do. And then flocking behavior here. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Anyways, to get started, just from the homepage here, you can click on Start Creating with the P5 Editor. And I'm just going to show you some examples of stuff in here, and then we'll put it over in Code Sandbox, and I'll show you how to get it into Webflow. But anyway, so we can see we have two functions. Uh, there's this function setup and this function draw. And these are P5 functions that it expects. It's gonna run setup the very first time it runs, and then it's gonna run draw, what is it, uh, 60 frames per second. So 60 times every second, this draw function is gonna get run. You can see we've got play and stop up here. If I hit play right now, I get a gray canvas, but nothing else. So to start off, uh, you might wanna start with the documentation, right? That's where we should always start when we're learning new libraries. So if you wanna start off with the documentation, you just click right here on reference on the homepage and you'll get this page here. Now, the very first thing is we wanna work on some 2D primitive shapes. So let's say we wanna draw a circle on the screen. So we can look at the circle reference here and it says, okay, circle takes three parameters and that is the, the first two are the X and Y coordinates and the second is the diameter of the circle. So you can see the syntax here, circle, X, Y, and D. So let's go back to our editor and we'll draw a circle uh, what is it we want X so we'll make it we'll just set it as zero zero and we'll give it a diameter of 50 Now if we play we can see we've got a white circle up here with a black stroke uh, Right at zero zero now if we wanted to put it right in the middle then we could change this to 200 and Now we've got a circle right in the middle, but that's not very fun So right off the bat what's so cool about p5 is that we can just say mouse X and mouse Y Again, you would want to reference the documentation to know that this exists or just start looking at some examples and see what P5 exposes to us as developers. But I'll click play. And now I have a circle that's just following my mouse on screen. Uh, so really easy to set up these kind of fun interactions and stuff like that. Now in draw, we have, we're drawing our background every time. In 220, this is just a gray value that's giving us that gray. But let's say we just kind of, we didn't want to draw every time. So if I cut that and just paste it up here and I run, now we see we're drawing the circle every time and we're getting a totally different artistic feel to this. And what else do we want to do? So we're drawing the background. Let's say, you know, we want to introduce some randomness. So we could say let r equal random. Again, another P5 function that they give us is this random one. And if I say random 100, it's going to give us a value between 0 and 100. I can go ahead and console.log. Uh, that value R, and then for the size of the circle, let's set it to R, and we'll hit play. And now we can see up at zero, zero here, we've got our circle just pulsating like crazy. And as we draw our mouse along, we're getting all different sorts of sizes. So that's also pretty fun. Uh, but you know, that's also pretty annoying to the user because in the back of my mind, as a freelance web designer, I wanna know like, how can I make an interaction that's kind of a little bit more useful and, and brings just kind of like little bits of delight to the user, right? Um, or, you know, maybe you do want a really fancy and gaudy animation. Uh, so maybe let's do that. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'll bring background back down here into the draw function. It's really common to see this up top. And this can take an RGB value. So like if I did 40, 40, 40, and 100, this is saying red value of 40, uh, green of 40, and B stands for blue of 40, and 100 opacity. So basically no opacity. And now we're getting more of a black background. And we want to get rid of this pulsating circle because it's just killing my eyeballs right now. So let's set this to 100 and click play. And now that's stuck up and following our mouse again. But I want to put this back in the middle. And I'm also going to get rid of console.log down here because that's actually, I'm noticing, causing just a little bit of slowdown, that fact that we're logging every 60 times per second. 
So we got rid of that. And right now we can see we're creating a canvas that's 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So if I pop 200 in here, then we're gonna get back to being in the center. Now something else that P5 gives us is this translate function. And this actually translates the entire coordinate system by the, what we specify. So if I wanna translate it by 200 and 200, now if I click play, you'll notice our circle is all the way down at the bottom right. But what I could do is rather than set the circle at 200, 200, set it to zero and click play, and now it's back in the center. This can be really helpful translating the coordinate system when you wanna do something in a certain part of the canvas, and you wanna work with zero, zero as your X, Y coordinate of the element you're working with, um, rather than doing a bunch of fancy math. So that's kind of a cool function that I, that I tend to use pretty often with P5. Now, I think we should also, let's see, as web developers, we want our websites to be responsive. So it's important to kind of think about what our width and heights are gonna be. You know, if we set this to 400 by 400 pixels, definitely not gonna be responsive. So we can set a, um, a width and a height to, let's set it to 600 and we'll set this to W and this to H. And then our translate will be width divided by two and H divided by two. So we're just setting ourselves up for future success. Future Keegan will thank us. Uh, all right, so we've got the translate that's down and that's still in the middle. And let's go ahead and make this move, do just a little bit of animation before we drop it into Webflow. Now, something I think that's cool is like using sign, uh, essentially, which is an easing function of sorts. So we'll say let wave equal sign. Again, something P5 is giving us. Um, actually, before I get into this, let me comment that out. Uh, if I just wanna move the circle to the right, like let's focus on just moving that. Let's say we'll let X equal zero. We're defining a variable called X just right up here. And then in our circle, let me bring this console down so you can see everything. We will set the X value to X and we will increment X by one every time the draw function is called, which remember is called 60 times per second. And now if we click play, we can see our circle just moving off to the right here. It's gonna go off screen and we're never gonna see it again. Now that's okay. Um, but you know, we, we made this variable X, something else we can look at. If I console log frame count, another thing offered to us by P5, down in console, you'll see that it's counting up from zero essentially, and it's just gonna keep going. So every frame gives a number. Uh, and so we can use this frame count in place of X. So we don't actually need this variable X. So I'll delete that. I'll delete this down here. And rather than put X there, I'll put frame count right here. And there we go, exact same functionality happening, but uh, we don't need another variable. So let's get back to this kind of sign thing we got going here. Now we know that sign will return us a value between negative one and one. So if we just plug frame count into there, then let's console log what wave is but let's also set the X value to wave. And now we can see our circle is kind of doing this jitter thing. It's, it's not moving far between one and negative one. If I multiply this by say like 50, then it's moving, but it's, it's moving way too fast. So something else we can do is rather than use degrees, convert this to radians and click play. And now we get a nice slow ease and movement of the circle. And we could, you know, increase the ampl amplitude by changing 50 to 100 and it'll go a little bit further on the screen, things like that. So this is kind of cool. Let's go ahead, you know, we're just modulating the X value right now. I'm gonna get rid of this console log. Let's essentially just copy this. And rather than sine, we'll call it cosine, and we'll call this first one wave sine, and the second one wave cosine. And uh, the X value is gonna stay as wave sine, and the Y value will stay as wave cosine. Now, if you remember your ninth grade math, when I click play, what do you think we're gonna get? That's right, we're gonna get a circle. Pretty cool, but it's honestly not that hard to do circles in uh, you know, Webflow IX2, uh, because what we could do is kind of set it up so that the circle's at the end of a div and then just rotate that div. Um, so rotations are pretty cool. But let's say, oh, like rather than cosine, if I change this to tangent and change the variable name as well, now I'm probably gonna get something a whole lot different. It's following a tan, like a tan function, and it's switching because of the sign every time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then what else? Something you can change is this opacity. Like if I change this to 90, we'll start getting trails, which is kind of fun. Um, but we'll just simplify and leave it to 40 right now, which is gonna give us the exact same thing that we had before. 
And what's the other thing I want to show before we pop this over into Webflow? Uh, let's go ahead and just create one more circle. And I'll just swap these. So this will be wave tan, and this will be wave sign, and save. And now we've got these two circles rolling about. And you know, I don't like that stroke there, so I'll just say no stroke all the way up here. And we should see that stroke go away. Yep, it does. And imagine like once we start introducing the concept of loops in programming, how we could get like a hundred of these on screen and make them small and give them a little bit, um, you know, make them really uh, more see-through so they don't obtrude with the user on the screen as much. Anyways, that's a lot of things to say. I think this is a cool example to just try to chuck into Webflow and we'll play around with some other DOM elements like heading. So I'm gonna first pop this into code sandbox. So I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll show you how to make it responsive in Webflow. So let's go ahead and I'll just copy all this. And in code sandbox, I'm gonna create a new sandbox. We'll just do a static one here. And we'll call this uh, P5 demo. And I'm gonna create a new file. Let me zoom in for you here. Call it index.js. And we'll paste that there. Let me get rid of that now. And actually, I need to grab this here. And there's two things. So this is just a blank Webflow project that I have right now. But in our home page, we are going to come down to the before closing body tag, and we're going to create a script. Uh, and then we're going to create a closing script tag. And within that, we're going to, oops, I'm totally lost track. We're going to create the source attribute and two quotations. And we'll paste that link that Code Sandbox is hosting our code at. And we want to host the index.js file. So there's nothing going in there, which can just close the script out. But before we run any of this P5 code, we also need the CDN, uh, the link to get the P5 code on our Webflow project. So I'll go to, I think, get started here. It's probably somewhere in here. You know, they're showing us here's how to use the editor. And then, oh, here it is. They're showing us how to use a hosted version of the P5 library right here. So I can copy this, come over to Webflow, and right above that, I'll paste. And I will save, and I'll go ahead and publish. We can see we have our P5 code executing, and we've got our canvas on the screen. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open DevTools because we're going to want to see what exactly we're doing with our canvas. So in Webflow, we didn't do, make anything called a canvas. But if I come into main, we can see that there's this HTML canvas in there. And now there is absolutely nothing in our navigator so what P5 is doing is it's creating this canvas element and dropping it on the DOM for us. Uh, and it's setting the width to 600 pixels and the height to 600 pixels. Now let's go ahead and make it take up the entire page. So something that P5 gives us, if I go back to the reference, uh, I think it's width, it's like a window width, yeah. So window width gets us the, the value from window.inner width. And if we're setting it to be the full screen size, that's gonna be fine. So I can just set this to width and we get the same thing, height. And now notice we haven't defined these variables anywhere, but they do exist in P5. So now if I save, then I completely break it. It's called window width, not width. So I'm going to get window width and window, change the H to capital and save and refresh. And now this is taking up the entire window width and window height. So pretty cool, but you'll notice we didn't really change our W and H values for the code itself. So everything that we used before, this W and H needs to change. So we'll translate by window width, and we'll translate by window height. And if we save and refresh, now we can see our animation running. And let's see what happens when we resize. Yep, it's still staying in the middle. And if I resize this way like this, you can see it's not re the canvas is not resizing. Um, so that's definitely less unfortunate. It's, it's doing well because our draw loop is, re is, um, is recalculating where the circles need to go, but it's not resizing the canvas itself. So P5 offers stuff for that. Let's check resize. So there's this window resized function. And this is, you know, they've already given this to us because they know so many people are gonna use this. So we have function window resized, and then they call another function resize canvas window width window height. So we'll copy that, and that's just another function. So I'll paste that right down here, and we'll save. And now when I come back to Webflow here, if I refresh, 
yes, our window's looking good. And now if I come really close, you know, the circles are still behaving. And as I go way bigger than what our initial window width was, so our canvas is resizing is really all I'm saying. And we can see that happening. I'm pointing like you can see me. <laughs> when I'm pointing into the DevTools, you can see the width um, highlighted in purple there changing. So some other canvas functions, say you don't want it to take up the whole screen. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. But say you only want it to cover half of the screen, then you want to look at this parent function. And what we can do is we can drop the canvas into a certain parent. So what I would do in Webflow is create like a div and call it something like P5 container and then give it an ID of P5 container. And then over in the code, set the, you know, store the canvas in a variable and drop it in a container. So I think I'll show you how to do that in another video because this one's already going on long enough. Hey, I hope you like that video. P5 is a lot of fun and there's so many possibilities with it. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. Also in the next video, which when it's done, I'll link it right up here. I'm gonna cover how to add a bunch of content to Webflow and Designer and like if it's not full screen, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna drop it into another div? So I'm gonna cover all of that in the next video. Again, be sure to check that one out when it's live. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.